Should be rolling here in a second. Okay, uh, today is uh, Monday, April the 2nd, 2007. We are at the home of uh, Lori Layton, uh, one of the daughters of the late Millard Orsini, and we are interviewing the family uh, about uh, Mr. Orsini's uh, uh, experiences in World War II. And uh, with us today is his youngest brother, Joseph. And uh, in the middle we have Lori Layton and then Terry Cuomo. Okay, the first question I'd like to ask, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your father's background, uh, about his family, where he was born and, and raised, whoever would, would like to start? Uh, he was born in uh, Township, which is uh, part of uh, Altamont Oscars. And uh, then he was uh, one of 14 brothers that I have, and he was uh, uh, my uh, fifth uh, oldest brother. Okay. One of five older ones. And there was uh, 10 others uh, after him, nine others after him born. Okay, so, so he was a big brother to you? Yeah. Okay. And um, <clears throat> uh, can you tell me uh, the date of his birth? Did 1919. Uh, May 2nd. May 2nd? 19, okay. 19, yeah. Okay. And whereabouts did he go to school? He went to uh, the Burn Knox Central School for a while, and then he, until uh, he uh, finished uh, school, I don't know if he graduated or not, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. And uh, when and where did he enter the service? He entered a service uh, in Albany. He was drafted. He, he didn't enlist because at the time they were drafting. So he entered a service uh, at Albany where they recruited uh, the draftees. And then from there he went to Missouri for basic training. And the war started at, uh, in December. And he went right to uh, to the Philippines for uh, uh, for the army service. Okay, so he was in the army when Pearl Harbor was attacked. Uh, I think he went in after that. Oh, after that. Yeah. After that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I, let's see. Do you know when he went to the Philippines? Right after after his training. Yeah, Raptor trainers, he went right out there to the Philippines. Okay, and um, what was he trained in? He, he had a specialty. Engineering, I think, was engineering. Yeah, he was a contractor. Yeah. Okay. He built airstrips. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And um, do you know ap approximately when he, uh, he was captured by the Japanese? Positive, but it was at the fall of the Batan, so okay. the Batan Death March. I'm not sure when the date of that was. Okay. He was in for 39 months. And he got out in 1946. Yeah. Yeah. So he had to be like 1942, 43. Oh, okay. It was 42. Okay, so he was one of the participants of the yes. Batan Death March. Yes, right. Okay. Yes, he survived it. Okay, and did he ever talk much about his experiences at all? No, not to family or maybe okay. family. Did, did he talk to you about it at all, Joe? Um, not too much. Uh, what I heard from other people, but to question him, I never questioned him. If he said anything, then uh, I wouldn't further question him. Okay. How did the family uh, get the information that he had been uh, captured and had become a POW? Uh, we got a telegram from the Red Cross uh, from Japan, Japanese. Uh, through the Red Cross that he was a prisoner of war, the Japanese government, a letter of information will follow. That's did, what the telegram read. Did the letter tell you where he was located? Uh, no, it didn't say where, it just, just that he was a prisoner of war. I still have those letters. You still got the letter? Yeah. yeah. It's just basic, very short, to the point. 
Okay. And while he was in captivity, did the family get any kind of letters at all from him? Or? If they got any, they were short and uh, censored. A lot of clippings uh, were done. Uh -huh. and I don't know what was in the clippings. He didn't tell us when he got home. We didn't show him the letters okay. he wrote. They were short and brief. The letters he wrote were just, I miss all of you, and I think about you all the time, about his family, and uh -huh. you know, say hi to my brothers and that type of thing. And they were always written to his mother because his right. mother stayed in the same place okay. the whole time he was in prison camp. Okay, now was his father living at that point? Yes. Okay. Was there support for you go at, in your community that he was a prisoner of war? Did people know that he was a prisoner of war and were they supportive of the worries that you must have had? Yeah, they, they uh, often uh, called us up and found out if we heard anything. They were always questioning what her, how he was and what we heard from him. And some of them didn't think he'd make it. They thought maybe it was, we didn't hear from him. He might have been uh, captured or killed or something mm -hmm. because if you picked up something to eat while they were uh, marching in a death march. They would club you. You reached over to get some, they'd club them. Sometimes they'd shoot them if they fell and they couldn't uh, make it walk. And they, instead of helping them along, they would shoot them. And uh, I read the book that Cindy gave me. I'm half most way through it. And uh, I hope my brother never went through all of it. It was in the book that he went through this person who wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Did he have any friends from this area that uh, were stationed with him at all? Uh, Nat Romanzo from Schenectady. I don't know if he's, if he's on the list or not. Yeah. Okay. That's the only one I know of that was with him. Okay. Was he a, a POW with him? Yes. I don't okay. know if he was with him at the prison camps, but he was captured in the Philippines. I don't know if you remember yeah. Nat Romanzo. Yeah. Okay. I remember him getting invitations to the meetings for his unit and him oh. really wanting to go, but been far away and not being able to go. Yeah. Oh. I do remember him really wanting to go. So he never was able to attend any of the reunions? No, 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 no. And one was in the Philippines, but then if he went there, he said he'd probably never find whatever money he had hidden, I think, somewhere. <laughs> oh, yes, there, there was a story about that. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want to relay that story? Well, I don't know if uh, Jack Pollard mentioned it. That's the first I heard that he had hidden money somewhere in the Philippines and he said, well, by the time I go back and look for someone might have found it and uh, or else uh, it's overgrown with shrubbery. Right. Okay. And um, uh, once, once he, well, actually there was a story I had heard where he had uh, Try to take some scraps of uh, potatoes yeah, or yeah. potato peels out, yeah. out of a, a dump, and he was severely beaten. Yes, I heard that. Okay. okay. That was in that book, Horror Trek, the, the gentleman that he knew had written the book, and that they were doing the He witnessed, that. yeah, he Horror witnessed that. Trip, yeah. Yeah. He had gotten beaten and kicked in the face for doing that. He was stealing mm -hmm. scraps of potato right out of the garbage can. Did they crawl on the wall or something? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe, yeah. I can't remember. But they were tortured every day. They were there. Okay. And um, did, did you notice uh, uh, a lot of change in, in your brother when he came back uh, because of his experiences? Uh, I mean, was he a different person? He uh, was, had malaria for a while. He was uh, used to sweat a lot and get uh, the fever. But after a while, I don't know if he was treated for and he didn't have much anymore after that. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying he would never go on a diet. But I prayed for him every day. I have food anymore. Yeah, we always have food in the house. Nobody was ever going to tell him. And he was pretty thin when he came back, yeah, I understand. I mean, uh, about as much as I weigh now, he weighed about 119 pounds or something. And, and how much did he normally weigh? About 200, maybe 190, 200. Yeah. Okay. And I know when we were young, he used to fall asleep in his chair and he always woke up with Screaming. Nightmares. nightmares. Oh, okay. Yes. And I prayed for him every day. I said the rosary, prayed for him. And uh, after a while, it was three years of prayer. I said, well, could we hear from him? May or June 10th. I gave a date, June 10th. Mm -hmm. Got to tell him that he was a prisoner of war. So the prayer was answered. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, and uh, he was in the prisoner of war camp for almost three years, was it? Oh, yeah. Three. Over moved three years? From the Philippines to Japan. I don't remember the name of the prison camp in Japan. Mm, I don't remember. Or what he did there. Uh, he worked in some factory, I think. He was in charge of the laundry. Doing the laundry? Laundry, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we had heard that he had been involved in the laundry and wondered if the bluing agent that would have been in the uniforms was then a uh, product or a resource for that his flag. I believe that probably yeah. is true. That's what the stories I had heard, that, that he mm -hmm. used the dye from the laundry to oh. make oh. the colors in the laundry. Okay, can, can you uh, tell us what you know about him making the flag, how he went about it, uh, what he used, what sort of materials? We have no idea. We heard that he used probably a shade, a window shade. Yeah. Okay. That he stole. Yeah. And, and he that kept he, his head and otherwise they saw that flag on, he would have been... Yeah. yeah. And he used the dye, that's what we had heard for the colors. And then it took him years to make it. He used to hide it under the floorboard. Mm -hmm. The other prisoners would keep a watch and he took it out and put it back so that he didn't get captured. Okay, and, and he was able to to uh, find the paint or, or steal or liberate yeah. the paint from right. the red and the the uh, white. Right. The red and the blue, and I believe the shade was the white part. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, growing up as, as, uh, well, as children, did you ever see the flag at all? No. You never no, knew it existed? Said, no. We were cleaning the closet or something at one point, and I pulled it out. And yeah, it was all set. folded up and yeah. moldy. Uh -huh. In a little triangle or a little square yeah, in a box. And we went to open it and it started to crack, so we just stopped because I think my uh -huh. mom realized what it was. Uh huh. Now, did she know the story of the flag? No. She knew it was in the closet. Uh -huh. She didn't know. That he really, I don't think he wanted to um, let us know all he went through. Just uh -huh. let us live our lives how he started our lives. Okay. When we talked with some of the students about this risky behavior, right. taking this chance, knowing that he could be beaten or worse. One of the questions the students asked was, well, was he always a risk taker? Somebody who was willing to go against the stream, so to say, or go against the flow? I think he was just really patriotic. Yeah, and he held the flag up when they liberated Japan. He, held he wanted flag that flag, right. On the plane's floor. He, he held wanted them to up. see that these were Americans standing there waiting to be rescued. Mm -hmm. Because we surrendered those people to Japan. And they were told that they, you know, we gave them up. So a lot of the prisoners really lost hope and thought they were never going to be rescued by us. Mm -hmm. But he always believed it. That's why he did that flag, so that he could hold it up as soon as planes came over or as soon as he could. And he mm -hmm. took a sword from the Japanese guard. He says, there's one thing I want, is that when sword. When he left. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, uh -huh. he, took a, he has a sword from the Japanese officer. That's all he wanted. Okay, and uh, do you know how long it took him from the time he was liberated to make it back home? Did he have to spend he time in the hospital? In Hawaii for a while, right? Why he went to Florida for uh, recuperation. recuperation. Okay. From Florida. He was there maybe a couple months or so, oh. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And then uh, he came home and my mother's waiting arms there. She he came home, I think, uh, when I got just, it was, I was in the Navy, I got leave. I had a week's leave or two, and then he came home the same day that I had to mm -hmm. go back. Aww. So I wrote a call for an extension of leave. They gave me one day because we were moving to another base. Mm -hmm. So he uh, came, went to Florida for maybe a couple months for, uh, to get built up again. I think the story of getting the Japanese soldier's sword is intriguing. Why would a soldier, although they've surrendered, separate or give up something to a particular American? I don't think they had a choice. I think. Yeah. That's he what took, he wanted it, it. Yep. and he, he got it from he him. He said you can That's have what whatever you want before you leave. And he probably faced that sword a lot of times, and he probably said, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Okay. Um, when he came home, uh, how long did it take him to uh, gain his weight back? Did it take months or years or? Not too long. Probably in a few months, uh -huh. three, four months, he gained it back little by little. Okay. And at that point, was he discharged from the service, or did he have to go back at all? He didn't have to go back once he uh, went to Florida, and then he was uh, discharged and came home. And okay. And then it. Then he resumed uh, an, an, mm -hmm. a normal life after yeah, that. And contracting business work. And, uh, With his brothers, right? Yeah. Okay. Who, by the way, they were what, seven altogether? Seven of us in the service at the same time? Three of them were in uh, business together, uh -huh. uh, excavating. And, uh, and, and that was in uh, the Altamont area where yes, the business mm -hmm. was? Yeah. Okay. Always in Altamont. All right. And. Uh, how many brothers and, and sisters are there in the in the family, in your immediate family? Two brothers, so there's four of us. Okay. All right, so you have a lot of a lot of cousins, I'm, I'm oh, sure, and aunts and uncles. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, I have uh, one brother left out of uh, 14 of us. Yeah. There was uh, two in the Army, two in the Air Force, two in the Navy, and uh, Army, Air Force, Navy. No Marines. Army Air Force and Navy, yes. Yeah, that's all, it. All okay. branches are Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we covered all branches except the Marines. <laughs> okay, and um, when when did your father pass away? He passed away in 1978. Okay. He was only 59. Okay. All right. Is there any any uh, other stories you'd like to add about your dad? Uh, okay. Just that I think everything he did was because he loved his country and his mm -hmm. family. And his family, right, that was waiting for him yeah. behind because he, yeah, he wanted to get back and he was going to. And, and even after he came back years later, I mean, all us growing up, the VFW, he... I think that's where he mainly spoke of all his stories to the men from the VFW that have been uh -huh. there before. Because um, I'm sure he didn't want to tell his family because it would be too sad for us to hear. Yeah. But they all, I'm sure, heard some stories. When he first came home, you couldn't separate him and my mother. They yeah. loved each other for about a half hour. But all her life, mm -hmm. every morning, he was up there having coffee with her. Mm -hmm. All yeah. his whole life, yeah. every morning. Yeah. And the VFW was a big part. Big part. Yeah. Okay. He was in every Memorial Day parade. He was in everything. Okay. Did he uh, stay in contact with any of the the fellows he was POWs with at all? Not that I know. I don't while he was so. I didn't get it. I used to get the mail all the time, and I never mm. so much mail from any of uh, his uh, all the ones who were mm. in prison or war or camps. Uh, he didn't hear from them or anyone in the okay. previous service. Everybody probably just wanted to put that behind yeah, them. That and could be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. Okay, you have some photographs I, I'd like to zoom in on. Um, I can, if you leave them right, the ones st uh, standing up. Let me zoom in on the, the smaller one first. Okay. Okay, he's in uniform. And w do you know approximately when that one was taken? I believe that's in 1941. Okay. Uh, probably as he just got enlisted. Well, he's he's got a number of uh, ribbons. Uh, maybe he was yeah, so. Uh, that could be. 1940. Uh, must be 41 war started, so December. So must have been. Okay. 42 when he first uh, before I went to Japan, mm -hmm. for Philippines. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, and this uh, this uh, I got it. Okay, this other photograph uh, where he's saluting. This was uh, taken in Altamont? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that, that's, uh, I'm assuming it was probably Memorial Day? Yes, it was. Yes. That was shortly before he died. Okay. All right, and uh, did you want to hold up that uh, photo of the, the flag? I can zoom in on that. And that's how the flag looks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, do you want to tell us about uh, the conservation of the flag and how it how it ended up at the Homefront Cafe? And well, when we found it all folded up and moldy and cracking, 
um, the DFW stepped in and they decided to find out where they can have it preserved. And I believe it was sent out to Massachusetts. And they misted it and they unfolded it very, very, very carefully with some moisture so that it wouldn't crack. Mm -hmm. There's a few cracks, but that's to be expected. And then they preserved it in a um, airtight box with glass over it. But the town raised the money. It was the like $3,000. Yeah. Okay. They took up collections and raffles. raffles and and then um, it was in the town hall for a while. And they had a great big um, Miller and Orsini day where they presented it to the family. And then, you know, we said Altima can keep it at the Homefront Cafe. And mm -hmm. Cindy Pollard tells all the story about it with the children from school and such. She's very She's patriotic. very good. Yeah, she Wonderful. is. Yes, she is. Yeah. And her little restaurant is awesome. Okay. Do you want to hold up that uh, newspaper uh, photo? And your father is uh, pictured in there. I'll zoom in on it. And, okay, and he is, um, I think he's the third third man over from the left or second from the right. Yes. He's right here. Okay. All right. I got it. All right, is there anything else you'd like to add? Everything we know. <laughs> yeah, right. oh, okay, it's and a yes, uh, it's if a you'll hold papers. that up, I can zoom in on that this also. Okay. Let, let me just get a shot of the back side of that, too. Okay, and do you know uh, what awards and decorations he received? Okay. Um, the other ones I'm not really familiar with. Okay. What veterans get? I don't know. He probably got the World War II liberation, the mm -hmm. uh, Philippine liberation, sure, and yeah. Asiatic Pacific. Those were just when he got yeah. out of the. Mm -hmm. yes, after. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So he got the medals after, I think, mm -hmm. for uh, mm -hmm. Purple Heart and all that stuff. They would be on there. Okay, is there uh, any any stories about your dad you'd like to uh, add? Anything you can think of? He was so well loved in, in the town of Gildland, the village of Altamont, at the, uh, you know, the outskirts. Altamont Fair, he loved yes, that. Yes, he was, yeah, he was, um, he used to run the Altamont Fair with some of the directors. He was on the board of directors for that, which, mm -hmm. Altamont Fair was right behind our house. The fence yeah. was on our you know, property line. He was, uh, all he was always fair, there. Fairly. And he also, he was a local politician. He okay. ran for um, Supervisor, superintendent of highways. Yeah. Never won because Democrats just weren't in the village <laughs> at that time. He always got the most votes out of all the Right. Democrats. <laughs> but um, he also did charitable things just out of the ordinary, just did them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a man that he knew from Altamont, not all that well, but he died in a tragic car accident, left a wife and two small children behind. Well, one girl was in my class at the time. My father went <coughs> door to door, all through Altamont, and collected money because this woman didn't have enough money to feed her kids with the husband gone, tragically. Mm -hmm. And he collected all this money for this man's family and, and presented it to him. Didn't want any recognition, you know, but we all knew he did it. Yeah, he would do things like that. He just was always really good like that. He belonged to the Knights of Columbus. Yeah, he was a grand mm -hmm. knight at one time, right? The VFW always, like I said, ran all the different functions. Um, someone wasn't feeling well while they were there, you know, because of war problems. He would take them home no matter how far they lived. You know, he was always 
always there. Mm -hmm. Always there for us kids, too. And he did yeah. everything for us. You, you wouldn't know what he went through. Uh -huh. That's why it was such a shock when, you know, we finally heard the story. Um, because he never spoke about it. But when we found, I, it's a shock. Mm -hmm. You know, that your father was that courageous and that patriotic and went through that and lived through it. It's a miracle that he lived through it. You know, he was. I watched a movie about the baton once. I was like, mm -hmm. couldn't believe yeah. that he had gone through that. Right. It was just really amazing. Just, just like can't. other men. And, and never talk about it. Right, right. I think that's why. Yeah. I, I think oh. that's why he died so young too, though. Mm -hmm. He yeah. never slept a full night. He just yeah. couldn't. So. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? I think it's been great. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for your participation and the interviewers. <laughs> no, thank you for doing this. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure. Believe this is me. So nice. You and, be so happy. And the interviewers today were Harriet Finch or Hattie Finch and Wayne Clark. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you thank for you. asking us. And if you have an extra video like you gave me, I know you'd you, like to have one. You've got it. You've oh, got thanks. it. Believe me. <laughs> thank you again.